Stu Gatz here for Upside.com. I've been talking a lot about Upside.com, telling you it will save your company big on business travel and that you'll get a big gift card every trip you buy. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, in less than two minutes, they gave me a few awesome choices on United and American for flights to Chicago that work for me and a bunch of big-name hotels. The first option got me a $200 gift card and saved the company nearly $400. Then they showed me options for a flight an hour earlier or a stay at the same kind of hotel down the block. I'd get even more in gift cards and the trip cost the company even less. Taking a business trip, you'd be crazy not to use Upside. Upside's the real deal. Got me a gift card for $200. Trust me, go to Upside.com today. Plus, when you use promo code Dan, you are guaranteed to get at least a $100 Amazon gift card your first trip. That's code Dan to get a $100 gift card free. Save big on travel and get a big gift card every trip. See what your next trip is worth today. Upside.com. That's Upside.com. Minimum purchase required see site for complete details this is the best of the dan lebator show with the stugatz podcast dominique foxworth sitting in with me today lebatard is on his final day of vacation we appreciate dominique coming down fill it in dan is back in the united states dominique spent some time with him yesterday i say that because there are times when he leaves this show where we all wonder whether or not dan's going to come back but he is back And he's excited to come back and do the show with us uh, tomorrow. A lot of interesting stuff to uh, get into today. First off, we have Jonathan Goldsmith, who is the original most interesting man in the world, those Dos Equis commercials. He will join us at 11 (laughs) o'clock. We got Jared Allen coming, too. The real most interesting man in the world. All right, put it on the poll at Lepitar Show on Twitter. Who's more interesting, the most interesting man in the world or Jared Allen? I mean, he's an actor pretending to be interesting. You know who's jumped out of plane? Jared Allen. You know who's eaten poisonous blowfish? Jared Allen. You know who retired on horseback? Jared Allen. Right. Who's got more sex? Riding Jared into a, Allen. Riding into a sunset where there was no sun. Hey, whatever. That. How interesting is that? Right. How many people do you know can ride into a sunset when there's no sun? Well, how do you know that Jonathan Goldsmith is not a guy who was jumped out of an airplane? We'll ask him. We'll, we'll find out. So you're wonder, you're wondering if the most interesting man in the world is just an act. Because I think it's based on him being really interesting. Wondering? You don't think he's interesting? The real jo- the real most interesting man, the, the real person behind the character, you don't think he's interesting? He's an actor. Put it on the poll. Do you think he's interesting? Do you think the most interesting man in the world is interesting? Yes or no? At Levitard Show on Twitter. He's not really living this life. <laughs> he's not real in these streets. He's a studio gangster. We all know it. He I'm going to call him out when he gets on here, studio gangster. He is a guy, though, because I was doing some research on him last night. You led the show promoting him, not Jared Allen, I'm the t- real most interesting man I'm, in the world. I'm telling you, if someone in Bristol told me today you could have Steph Curry at 11 o'clock, I would not bump the most interesting man for Steph Curry. <laughs> Well, Steph, Curry, Steph Curry doesn't seem that interesting either, but right. he's probably more interesting than the most interesting man. <laughs> but he's also a guy, because we were talking local hour about the 30 for 30 last night, Lakers-Celtics. Um, it's fantastic. Three-part right. series. Uh, you had parts one and two last night, two hours, eight to ten last night, and then you had part two last night, part three is tonight. We were talking about Pat Riley and how he's gotten better looking with age, much like myself. Uh, he has gotten better looking with age. A uh, Jonathan Goldsmith is one of those guys. Jonathan Goldsmith, if you look at pictures when he was young, not nearly as good looking as he is now. And Pat Riley, I am telling you, Pat Riley right now has never been better looking ever in his entire life than he is at this very moment. That guy is aged well, man. Pat Riley also more interesting than the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> I think I mean I really feel like like I, you the whole shipping container, more interesting. Like, I think we could go story for story with that guy and crush him. He's not that interesting. Back, Chris, do you uh, think the most interesting man in the world is actually interesting? The real person, Jonathan Goldsmith. Do you think he's actually interesting? We'll ask him. I'm with Dominique. He can't, well, I think he cannot be as interesting as his character, as that character is the most interesting man in the world. Right. It's impossible. It's going to be a letdown. When you're Overrated. <laughs> when, you're, when your character, <laughs> Guillermo, you're with him? Overrated? Not that interesting? He's just hes just going to be a guy. I mean, he might be a cool guy, but he, this guy, no, he's not going to be that guy. Overrated. Yeah. Overrated. So is Jared Allen. What? Whoa. 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 Did say, I say that? Sorry. Say it to his face. I will not. <laughs> uh, Roy, did you, uh, do you think he's interesting? 
No, this is going to be a letdown. Really? Overrated. <laughs> Overrated. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to having him on. That's good promotion right there. Yes. Very good. You should go into this with no expectations. Right. And then it can only exceed that. I'm interested in the story in how he, you know, how he got the job and how it changed his life. I'm really interested in that if, because it did change his life. If you gave me a lifetime to come up with reasons to stick around and listen to that inf- that interview, right? I would die before I came up with any reasons. No, that's not fair. No, yeah. it's going to be a good interview. Thanks. Eleven o'clock, right? Yes. I like what Dominic's doing though. He is he is lowering the expectations because I have them in such a lofty place. So he is lowering those expectations. But I think we, I'll do this throughout the interview whenever he says something that's lame. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that to him. <laughs> I'm excited. This is as excited as I've ever been for a guest. Jared Allen is much. I, I I know Jared Allen not super well, but from some players' association stuff and from his career, he's much more interesting, much more exciting. He's done cooler things. The man wears a cowboy hat. Well, let me present this idea to you. Him and Allison have the same jacket. Should I just do, should I do, (laughs) I should have let that sit for a second. Should I do the Jonathan Goldsmith interview by myself and then have Dominique do, because it appears that you have done your research on Jared Allen, I have not, have Dominique do the Jared Allen interview by himself. I mean, we'll both be here for each other in the event that we need one another. And then we will judge later in the show whose interview was more interesting, whose was better. Do you guys think that's a good idea or a bad idea? It's a bad idea. Why? It, it, it's not. No, it's a bad idea, Stu Gods. Because they don't want you to be in that competition and lose all your confidence after you lose. Because <laughs> okay. I got a better teammate. All right. Jared Allen, much better teammate. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Man's played on teams his whole life. Yeah. Played in the Super Bowl. Yes. Most interesting man in the world doesn't know anything about teamwork. I do. He's a solo guy. Right. Iso Joe. <laughs> well, he's never solo, man. I mean, so he's surrounded by beautiful women. Why? Because he's the most interesting man in the world. Well, he has a new book, so he's doing the rounds. And I got a text from someone saying they saw him in an interview a couple days ago, and he was interesting. So this now falls on you. Wow. To make him interesting. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the added pressure. He's an iconic commercial character, right? Like, probably the most iconic commercial character. Can you think of anyone else? Don't we do progressive ads? Flo from Progressive is certainly in that conversation. Uh, Yes. The Where's the Beef Lady. Remember her? She was iconic. I can't remember her name, but she was iconic. The Taco Bell Dog. The Taco... Excellent. The Dell guy who who got fired, didn't he? Remember the guy who was... The Dude, one? you're getting a Dell. Yeah. That, that, isn't that Hodgman? His last name's Hodgman, that guy? No, but, that's a different guy. That was the guy who played the Mac guy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You have to remember the name to be iconic, though, right? Does the ShamWow guy count, or is that more like an infomercial? Wow, the ShamWow guy. Okay. I think that counts. I mean, commercials are commercial. Do infomercials know how ridiculous they are? Are they like, so like action movies? The best action movies are the ones that are aware that they're action movies and they don't try to be more. They're like, you want half-naked women, explosions, and violence. We'll give it to you. Do infomercials recognize, are they that self-aware or like you want someone tripping over stuff, doing normal tasks sloppily, (laughs) and you want us to come in, and you also want us to lie about how you only have minutes left to get this deal, and you want us to hit you with that last minute add-on, like, and you'll get a paperclip holder. Like, do they, I feel like the best infomercials are the ones that know that they're infomercials, and don't try to be more than that. I do like the pressure they apply, where you got, like, 20 seconds left, there's a clock on the screen, you got 20 seconds to go, and then they air the same infomercial <laughs> on the same channel right after that one is done. Uh, does it work, though? Are there people yes, out there? me. <laughs> yes. These guys know I'm a sucker for a good infomercial. So when they put the little infomercial clock at the bottom you're like oh that's real i better call in or i'm not gonna get my free paper pick up pick up, pick up someone needs a pick up i only have 10 seconds left if you call if you call in the next 60 seconds you get five extra yeah. <laughs> yes. have you ever purchased something off an infomercial never i think i picked up like some stupid golf item once like some useless divot filler thing right i mean i have bought real estate scams off of infomercials i have purchased i mean just no i mean they i didn't know they were scams they were sold as something that was going to make me a lot of money they didn't once they're, mostly because i didn't read the books if they're if they are infomercials and they say it's like a little known thing don't you already know it's a scam because it's on television like we got this secret and we'll only give it to you 
like I wouldn't share a real estate secret for, and they're like, we'll give it to you for a hundred bucks. Like you can make billions on real estate. Isn't that enough to let you know this is not worth it? Um, Only twenty nine ninety nine. Right. Put it on the poll. If you had the secret to making millions, would you <laughs> sell it to someone else for twenty nine ninety nine? You would think that would be a lot more valuable. You would think. Hey, I made billions doing this. I'm going to sell it to you for twenty nine ninety nine. It's a great point. Uh, can you put that on the poll, Bill at Levitar Show on Twitter? If you had the secrets to making billions, would you sell those secrets for twenty nine ninety nine? That's another. That's another um, <laughs> infomercial thing that must be done. Is that. The first number can be whatever you want, but the rest of the numbers in the price must be nines. Don't don't you dare slide an eight in there. It's all nines. Got to be nines, or it's not a real infomercial. Stu, you ever bought that magic seal? Oh man! You can like, oh it, yeah, like your boat could have a hole in it, and you just <laughs> slide this thing across it, and your yeah. boat can. The guy does it though. Yeah. I, I know mean, he you does. can't tell. You can't say it's not happening. He has a screen door. He paints them with magic seal. I know. Out I got, on the water. I didn't purchase that. I did purchase the. Uh, you guys remember this? It was the um, the ab roller thing. Yeah, the ab roller. Body by Jake. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that that actually works, but you have to actually use it. And I mean, based on what I'm seeing here, Stu, not sure that you ever actually used that puppy. No, I actually brought it down to the studio here. Remember, I was going to do <laughs> I was going to do sit ups during the uh, commercial breaks. Yeah, it's still here. <laughs> and uh, no, it's not still here. They realized I was never going to do sit ups during the commercial break, and someone threw it away. When um when I was uh like towards the end of my career, my wife was in law school, so in the off season I'd go stay with her at law school and then go to the gym and work out. And I would occasionally, like every third time, I tried to like I'm a smaller looking guy. I'd do something to let all those nerds know that I'm not one of you. <laughs> like I so one of the things I would do is take the ab roller and put it like I'd lay horizontal to the ground, arms fully outstretched, holding the ab roller. And roll all the way up to my feet, rather than do the normal ad roller. Right, just do ab rolls from a completely horizontal position mm-hmm. up to your feet. It's a good move. Show off. It always got the attention, and I'd I'd um wait until some big guy in the gym is like doing like I don't know one or two reps of three fifteen or something on the bench. Right, and I let him finish, mm-hmm. and without a warm up, slide under there, bang it out for like six. <laughs> Get up and go do pull-ups. <laughs> I'm not one of you nerds. I bought one of those ceiling sprays once, and I had to call poison control because I thought I poisoned myself. Of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> this is the least shocking thing I've heard all so, I have a, a, an admission. While I've never purchased anything from an infomercial, I have purchased things that say as seen on TV. Like something about that feels better to me. Like I'm not going to call your stupid number. Like, I'm not a rube that's falling for this trick. Like, oh, I only got 20 seconds, shut up. But if I'm in a store and it has the as seen on TV stamp on it, and then I remember that the commercial was dope and they followed all the infomercial rules, uh, I'll, I'll slot them a couple of chips. Give me in, that. In college, I worked at an as seen on TV store for a little bit, for like a month. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Did you really? I don't think I've ever been in, as, in an as seen on TV store, but like, I'll see something in Bed Bath and Beyond or something that'll say as seen on TV. It gets my attention. <laughs> I just learned the Flex Seal guy's brother lives in my community down here in South Florida. Yeah, nice. the Flex Seal. What an odd thing. Nice. What an odd job. You see him riding around in his boat with Flex Seal on it. <laughs> <laughs> Don Libertard. So I keep reading about whales and dolphins and blah, blah, blah. Then I stumble upon this great animal called the narwhal, which is essentially a unicorn whale. A unicorn whale. What? Google it. Stugats. Oh, my God. N-A-R-W-H-A-L. Thank you. Look at it. Life changer. <laughs> Narwhal. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Catch Stu and Mike Golick Jr. every Sunday for weekend observations from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. The Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gatz is brought to you by the free 18 Birdies app. Make your phone the best club in your bag. Before or after Stu's show, you can catch an even better show called The Morning Roast <laughs> with me, Clinton Yates, and Mina yeah. Kine. Yes. It's longer, it's bigger, it's better. Yes, it is. That's why it's on later. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Mike Golick Jr. has guest, guested on our show a couple times to talk uh um, Bachelor and Bachelorette because I don't watch that show and right. Clinton and Mina love it. So Mike is tremendous. 
you also are great. However, I feel like you, you're you kind of spent. And on the weekends, you just jump on, on Junior's back and go for a little ride for a couple hours. You feel like I'm mailing it in on that show? You're not mailing it in. You're just let, you're letting uh, Junior shine is what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. Like Honest, uh, to, to be honest with you, that is what I'm doing. Right, I know. I I'm trying to it. let him so, uh, shine. I'm trying to let Mikey C., one of our producers, shine uh, because I love those guys. And uh, Gold's great at this. Like he Gold is. Jr. is really, he is. he's really good at this. And I'm lazy. And it's 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but there are times where Golik has been hung over and has not made the show. I have no problem saying that. Um, no, he has. He didn't make the show. I, we, the, the entire show, one two-hour show, was me trying to find Mike Golick Jr. He did that on purpose. It made for a great show. Yes. Why don't awesome. you stop throwing your teammate under the bus? I think everyone knows that at this point. Well, I don't they don't need to be reminded. Oh, it's okay. No one cares. It was fun. It was fun and funny. We had his dad on. His dad was true. reprimanding did, I, him on I, the air. <laughs> I think he did it on purpose. He yes. did it on purpose in order to make for Radio Gold a memory. It did. Kind of uh-huh. like how sometimes you yes. you do, you are lazy on purpose. Unintentional Radio Gold. Yes. That's nice, what it turned into. Nicely done. People are uh, people are claiming, we're asking for iconic uh, commercial characters because Jonathan Goldsmith, the original most interesting man in the world is coming on at 11 a.m. Eastern, and people are saying the number one commercial character by far is uh, Mr. Whipple from the Charmin bathroom tissue commercials. Don't squeeze the Charmin. Like they're, like they're saying by far, like a landslide. He's number one. Now, I do have a list here where it does say that they, they rank him number one. They have the most interesting man number 10 on their list. So uh, your thoughts last night. We talked about the 30 for 30. Uh, Lakers Celtics. Uh, I watched most of it. I got through the first two hours, which I thought was going to be thought was going to be boring and uninteresting. It turned out to me to be the most interesting parts because I learned stuff that I did not know headed into the film. Um, I knew all the stuff. I lived through it. I mean, that's that's right in my wheelhouse. Lakers Celtics, eighties bird magic, all of that. Um, the first two hours was fascinating because it goes back to the sixties and Red Hour back and Bill Russell and. And uh, how those teams were formed, and then Dave Cowens and Havlicek for the Celtics uh, in the seventies. What'd you take away from that? Um, I mean, there was, was there was, it was great. And part three is tonight, uh, eight o'clock on ESPN. There was so much, and I, I mentioned in the local hour how I went into a Pat Riley rabbit hole just because I didn't realize how interesting his life was and how much serendipity played into him becoming the guy that he is today. But I know we've all heard about how Magic and Bird kind of lifted the NBA's popularity, but I didn't realize how unpopular, I guess, the NBA or how much of a fledgling league it was. Yeah. Because they talked about in in the 50s and early 60s about the Lakers driving around in a van and hopping out and doing uh, basketball exhibitions as a way to try to attract fans. And they talked about how even though the Celtics were dominant in the 60s how the stadium wasn't even full and part of that was due to just bigotry they they proposed in the series but I mean it's just looking back on it we see it all like nostalgically and we don't really necessarily especially those of us who didn't live through it don't necessarily remember how like bad the NBA was well it's interesting because you did not live through it I did um did you find yourself yearning for that kind of competition because that's not you know what yeah. you saw there with Mikhail clotheslining players and those guys fighting. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a part where Dr. J and Larry Bird get in a fight, and Dr. J, he never got angry, but Larry Bird, I believe Larry Bird told him to retire, yeah. and Dr. J put his hands around Larry Bird's throat, and there was a big fight. Did you find yourself yearning for for something closer to that? Because what you saw last night is certainly not today's NBA. Yeah, so I am normally, when I hear old people or older sports fans uh, hearkening back to those days when things were real and things were better, I'm normally dismissive and kind of, I mean, my point mostly is that people are generally the same as they were then. But what I didn't take into account is that the league was so much different. And I think the part of it being a fledgling league is – People were less refined. They talked about how um, Red Arback went about getting um, Bill Russell. And it's just like he fleeced a bunch of different teams, which is super interesting. And also being part of being a fledgling league is the stars were kind of allowed to be a little bit more loose, and including the coach. Red Arback was lighting cigars on the sideline, <laughs> taunting his opponents before the game was even over. Like, can you, And he even, after the game, after they won uh, one of, I think it was Arback's last title, he 
like openly taunted the Lakers. And these are things that you don't, I would love to have. And the fighting is one thing. I don't know that I would want to have that, but it is a cool thing. But these are things that we would never see in today's NBA because it's so cleaned up and so corporate now that they have some sponsors. Back then, they just wanted some attention. To find us on a station near you, visit ESPN.com slash ESPN Radio and click the Station Locator tab. Don Lebatard. Yanni Adababubu. Stugats. Giannis Adababumbo. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Dominic Foxworth sitting in with us today. We, uh, we love having him. Lebatard is back tomorrow. Jonathan Goldsmith is the original most interesting man. He will join us at 11 o'clock. Jared Allen will join us at noon Eastern. Uh, Dominic loves the show and has listened to the show for a very long time. Um, so when the at the height of the most interesting man is Mike back yet? Oh, uh, Roy, is he back in the uh, in the studio yet? Mike's up in Bristol, by the way. He is not. He is not back. Roy, how long ago did we do these uh, most inconsistent man in the world uh, parodies? I guess. Man, it felt like five years ago. All right, let's give the uh, let's give the audience. You have one ready. I want to give the audience a sampling because we have the most interesting man in the world. And at the height of his popularity, uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to record uh, me as the most inconsistent man in the world. Here's one of them. He brags about having never been late to work, but then he leaves the show early for a fantasy draft. He does advertisements for testosterone boosters that he declares have improved his sex life and then complains about his languishing sex life on the air. He says parenting is all luck, but then requests to leave the show early for a family dinner so he can set a good example for his children. He tells everyone how great he is at fantasy sports, only to reveal years later that he hired a guy named Inferno to draft all his teams. He is the most inconsistent man in the world. I don't always have takes, but when I do, they're all over the place. Stay inconsistent, my friends. <laughs> we have several of those. I just want to play them back to 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 back. Maybe next segment we will. Uh, you had an interesting take during the break about the guys who narrated the, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> the Lakers Celtics 30 for 30 last night. <laughs> At this point um, uh, that I've gotten to the end of part two, it felt like the Celtics had done better, but it was clear that the Lakers won the narration battle because the Lakers had Ice Cube narrating and the Celtics had Donnie Wahlberg. No right. disrespect, Donnie, but you're no Ice Cube. No, a little lopsided uh, L.A.'s way there. Yeah, it seems like L.A.'s winning that one. Well, who could have Boston gone with to, uh, to maybe even that out a little bit? Uh, I because mean, I'm with you. Like Donnie Wahlberg and I Ice mean, Cube. I mean... His more famous brother. Bobby Brown. Hmm. Matt Damon. Well, that was a blind spot for Stugat there, that Bobby Brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who is the Boston equivalent of Ice Cube? Because even Mark Wahlberg does not even, I mean, makes it closer, but Ice Cube is still blowing him out by like 25, 30 points. Uh, Everlast from House of Pain? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. What are you doing up there? You're bouncing in and out of the studio. What is going on? Mainly apologizing for our show up here. That's what, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I don't but... think we're helping. No, no, no. We're doing fine. <laughs> or if we're, we're fine. Yeah. I had a productive meeting with people that uh, we put in difficult spots, like, you know, talent bookers. Right. Um, and basically, the people that booked the Christopher Guest interview. So I, I spent a good chunk of time apologizing for <laughs> Mike's that. been up in Bristol for three days just apologizing to people on behalf of the Dan Levitard show. <laughs> yeah, I actually would have been back sooner, but in, in the hallways walking back, I bumped into Timmy Kirkchen. Oh, wow. Which is, yeah, it was just always a delight. He's actually going to be joining us in studio um, at some point during the All-Star festivities. Very nice. I do want to know who, uh, in studio, an in-studio appearance for Kirchin, that's going to be fun. You've never met him, have you? I've never met, uh, no, I've never met Tim Kirchin. Now that I'm thinking about it, I've never met him. I'm assuming Dan's met him several times. He's excited times. to meet you and sort of figure out if you're an idiot or an idiot savant. Uh, idiot savant. Put it on the poll. Stugatz, idiot or idiot savant, at Levitard Show on Twitter. Uh, Mike, am I taller than Tim Kirchin? I think you are, yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's nice. One, there's one person out there. Um, <laughs> we'll go head to head. Okay. Because Mina, uh, Mina Kimes was in last week, and she's taller than I am. 
by about a half inch. She have bigger hands too. She has a longer reach. Definitely okay. a longer reach. Yeah, she has long arms. It's important. Yes. Um, I want to talk about. There's so much to get into about the thirty for thirty last night, mm-hmm. but the one feeling I had, and we'll discuss it next, and we'll also play at least three more of those most inconsistent men in the man in the world uh, parodies. But I do want to talk about, I had this feeling, because Riley's story, parts of it, I was not aware of. Mm -hmm. How he got the Laker job, the fact that he was a television announcer, took that job over, didn't really want the job, was handed a Cadillac, and, you know, 30 years later, we have a legend in Pat Riley, one of the legends of the NBA. And it got me to thinking how unimportant the head coach is in the NBA. He had zero, I shouldn't say zero experience, he had next to no experience and turned in to one of the most iconic figures in sports and one of the great head coaches and leaders that we have in the history of sports, any sport. We'll talk about it next. Don Lebatard. Michael Jordan never scored 70 in a game. No, but he scored 60-something in a legendary playoff game that they won. Stugats. They lost. Did they really? They lost. Yeah. Wow. Breaking they, news. Yeah. Spoiler they, alert. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Dominique Foxworth is uh, is in studio. I miss Cody. Why? Because you have to do all the reads? Because yeah. <laughs> you have to work today? Yeah. Uh, I mean, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, what? I mean, doing the reads isn't really the work. Doing the reads is like boxing out. Yes. The the playmaking happens between the reads. <laughs> and I have to do that every time I come down here. Right. It's a, lot of, right. a lot of ball handling. Yeah. A lot of playmaking. I understand. I mean... I just, I'm not here for this boxing out business. That's for other people to do. You want me to do the reads? Because I'm happy to do them. Man. No, I'll do them. It's, it's fun. All right. I like challenges. Because I just get a welcome relief from... Uh... No, no, no. You don't got to do them. I got them. You're All great right. at it, though. Thank you. I appreciate it. People don't realize how great I am at the reads until they come down here and try to do the reads. That's all I'll say, except for Amin El Hassan. He's the only guy who's defeated that chair. The box out champ. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, from what I've been told, I didn't listen to the show that day. Uh, but I've been told that Amin Al Hassan is the only person to have defeated that chair, getting through all the reads flawlessly. Um, but I still don't feel like he has a good, as good a radio voice as I do, or uh, really doesn't have the kind of cadence you need to to do things like this. There is a sing song element to how you're supposed to do these things. I, and I'm great at him. I, I got to be honest with you, I'm great at him. A dad can mock me all he wants. I'm going to trip up on some words, but for the most part, I'm great at him. Maybe the best ever. I mean, trip it up is not necessarily a bad thing. It draws more attention to the read. Yeah. I would say Greeny won me too, right? In that order? 1A, 1B. 1A, 1B. Who's uh, B? Greeny, obviously. Thank you. Uh, Roy, do we have some more? Because uh, people on Twitter are loving these most inconsistent uh, man in the world. And we have the most uh, interesting man in the world, the original, coming up uh, next. Jonathan Goldsmith is going to join us. Do you, have, uh, do you have another one of those for us? He wanted Derek Jeter to go away, even before the season began, but would never bench him. He gets mad when people give Dan credit for breaking the Cliff Kingsbury news, yet he takes the credit in his fantasy football league for work done by his ringer named Inferno. He wants the radio station to give away more heat tickets to listeners, yet he has two different sets of heat season tickets that he has never given away and keeps exclusively for profit. He is the most inconsistent man in the world. I don't always have takes, but when I do, they are all over the place. Stay inconsistent, my friends. Roy, what are you laughing at over there? Because I, I, I listened to him last night. I was crying. I was actually crying because we did those, what, like five or six years ago? Something yeah. like that? Yep. Yep. Uh, you're just laughing at me? Yeah, I'm laughing at you. You are truly inconsistent. <laughs> Dominique, you want another one of those? Give me more. All right, let's go. One more. He tries to leave the show early for Passover, yet plays golf on Yom Kippur. He will bash you and your policies on the air and then have you booked so he can agree with your every word. He'll be glad to see Mello leave the Knicks, but so angry if Mello actually left the Knicks. He demands unmitigated toughness from pro athletes, yet called the police when he found a frog in his garage. He is the most inconsistent man in the world. I don't always have takes, but when I do, they're all over the place. Stay inconsistent, my friends. I appreciate the directive at the end to encourage everyone else to stay inconsistent and 
you are a great champion for inconsistency. Thank you. But I'll I'll throw this out there. Okay. Being inconsistent is human. Like, why are we giving everybody a hard time? We're giving Stu a hard time and laughing at him like we're all somewhat inconsistent. I mean, I would say it's the um, it's as important. If you want to get into this business, being inconsistent is as important a quality that you need to have than any. I mean, <laughs> right? Tupac made Brenda's got a baby and I get around. So you're kind of like Tupac. Okay. You're the Tupac of sports radio. Stupac. Love it. Yeah. Pocking it. <laughs> Roy, give him one more. I mean, the audience is demanding these things. Give him another one. He retweeted people thanking him for saving the podcast when he had absolutely nothing to do with saving the podcast. <laughs> he starts sentences with, yeah, no. <laughs> he calls Nikola Vucevic the Russian, even though he is Swiss. He says parenting doesn't matter and then encourages his Twitter followers to purchase his mother's book on parenting. He is the most inconsistent man in the world. Oh, man. I don't always have takes, but when I do, they're all over the place. Oh, Stay inconsistent, my friends. <laughs> can, can we just point out how your mother writes books yeah. on parenting? Yeah. And you are the byproduct. Yeah. So like when <laughs> when they say, what does she know about parenting? She pushes pushes you out into the center of the ring and says, look what I did. Put it on the poll. Should my mom be writing books about how to raise your kids? Seriously, put that on the poll. Because you're right. If I'm your son, you cannot write books and be an authority on how to raise children. Uh, Mike Ryan, do those still make you laugh? We did those years ago. Do those still make you laugh? Absolutely. We should actually find some more inconsistencies. <laughs> do you think Jonathan Goldsmith would uh, voice them for us? Can I ask him that? What do you think, Mike? Oh, do it. Yes, I'm going to ask him. I like yeah, no. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, Jonathan Goldsmith, the original, most interesting man in the world, next. Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this, um... Five seconds. Oh, switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay. Judges? That's true, Kevin. They'll allow it. Congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer.